Hey, hey, Marcus House with you here. Today we are sending a massive rover up to the moon and while we're here, we may as well grab this um, building surface outpost on the moon mission. Uh, so this is going to give us just a little bit of cash. We've got plenty already, but uh, yeah, 163,000 there uh, on completion with 64 advanced. So we'll pick that up. So yes, yeah, scrolling down here in the VAB without our fairings on, you can see I'm basically building a space truck. I'm going to haul this thing up to the moon. Um, it's got a pretty big core stage here. We have five core stages there set up with asparagus staging. We're going to be dropping sets of two at a time, so we've got three whole stages there. All of this, of course, hidden neatly behind a fairing, and it only just gets behind that fairing. So off we launch here. Today we have got a view from the perspective of a camera mounted on the side of the fairing. So uh, this actually makes for quite a good shot, I think. We can see this coming right up here. Starting that gravity turn as we pass 100 meters per second. We'll have the first two mammoth cores emptying out here first, ready to detach. These two, of course, empty much quicker because they're feeding fuel into the other tanks, so there they go there. Now that we've dropped those two tanks, we'll rotate around so that we're getting a little more lift. Remember, of course, as you're launching to keep adjusting your inclination, just doing a slight adjustment there to bring it back in line. Now these next two boosters don't need to detach until we get up above the atmosphere, up above that 70 kilometers, so we're going to be losing these at around the same time that we ditch our fairings. Just passing 1200 meters per second there now. It's a very good view from this angle. I might have to use this one more often. We are of course through the thickest part of the atmosphere, so we can start rolling this vessel right over, very close to horizontal now. And engine cutoff as our apoapsis hits 80 kilometers. And just getting ready now to ditch those fairings. Just adding a very small thrust here as the fairings start to fall away. There we go. And we'll power this right up and basically empty out these two side rocket boosters. So this now leaves us with a completely full central core. This is going to get us right up to the moon. It's even going to help us descend down onto the moon as well. Before that though, we just need to circularize our orbit here. And there we go. So we'll set the moon as our target and we'll just plan our intercept here. Now the thrust to weight ratio on this thing is quite high. We can actually do this in one pass quite easily. This burn of just over 850 meters per second can be completed in just over one minute. You can see there we have a huge number of solar panels attached to this thing. We have a few on the modules which are docked to the space truck and we have quite a few on the space truck itself. So there we go, we have our encounter set up. We'll actually bring the periapsis in just right down close to the moon surface there. I do love these shots of the planet falling away like that. And as we pass down here into the moon's gravity well, we'll come up to the periapsis, turn retrograde, and start our burn to reduce our velocity enough to fall into a moon orbit. There we go there. Now what we're going to do here is a little rearranging. We're undocking these two portions of the vessel. The large portion's going to come down on top, but this claw portion is going to be attached onto the back of this thing. Now the reason we didn't do this before launch is because the large vessel on the back there made the vessel too wide to uh, cover with a fairing. So uh, that's why we're doing some rearranging here. <laughs> After giving that science lab vessel there a bit of a nudge to send it out of the way so we could dock that, uh, just bringing that back here now. Just bringing that around here using our RCS just to get this thing roughly lined up now. And we're going to pull out the docking port alignment indicator panel here, which is a great mod if you want to do some uh, very fancy docking. Although saying that, I'm not making this look very damn fancy. In you come, and there we go, we're docked there. Just a very small retrograde burn here now, just so that we'll come down onto the surface. 
And we'll just time warp down here now, um, and we'll just start to wipe off all of our horizontal velocity with this rocket booster. We've still got quite a bit of fuel left. We actually probably could have done with a slightly smaller vessel, but no matter. What we're going to do here is ditch this last core down onto the surface, and then we'll come in to land with the space truck itself. So we'll just undock there from that central core booster, and we can now use our space truck now. Uh, we've actually got four engines on the bottom side of this thing to come in vertically And we also have two nerve rocket motors on the back of this thing so we can control our horizontal movement at the same time Now I'm just turning on the second set of little readouts there for Kerbal Engineer Just so I can see that suicide burn rating up there in the top right hand side it's a really great little tool to use when you're doing a vertical landing. You can basically determine quite accurately uh, when you need to start burning full throttle and basically it's going to bring us right down quite close to the surface before we wipe off all that velocity. So it means less uh, losses due to gravity. Just trying to touch down nice and gently. And there we go there, touch down nice and gently on all four wheels. Now the large vessel on the back of our space truck is our science lab, so we're going to immediately transfer our two scientists over into the uh, into the science lab there. And using the X science here and now mod will pick up all that science and transfer all the data there into the lab for processing later on. Then we can just rinse and repeat this process, pick up all that science, remember the EVA report and the surface sample of course. After picking up all of our science readings, we can now open up our cargo bay, which is just here. And we can now transfer all that science into one of these storage units. And this vessel is going to have the capability to get all the way back to Kerbin. With our wonderful scientists on board, we can come out here with Kerfal Kerman, and he can come down and reset our material study and our goo canisters. Thank you, Kafal. We can now head you back up into the science lab. There you go, board there. Valentina Kerman, she can EVA out here. She's going to come out and hop into our little vessel here. We could, of course, have transferred her, but EVAing her just is a little more fun. She can hop into our little lander. Come on, come on. There we go. Now we can simply undock this little vessel and just slightly launch upwards and out over the front of our space truck. This is a great little vessel to go on a little joyride with. It's got all the instruments on it so you can actually take off and come back to the space truck at any time. And the same goes for this larger vessel here with our science lab on it. We can launch this quite a distance as well and also of course do some very good data processing at the same time. So. We'll bring this down here and touch down close by the space truck as well. And just for the hell of it, we have this little vessel here powered by ion engines. This thing could basically uh, get to orbit multiple times and back with science instruments, so we could also utilize this thing. So this leaves us with Bill Kerman, our engineer. Let's take this thing for a bit of a drive. Now, of course, traction is never wonderful on the moon, so we can only get up so much speed so quickly with this. But after just a little while, you can actually get up quite a lot of speed, and actually, it becomes quite difficult to slow down when you want to at that point. <laughs> just getting a little bit of air here now, or vacuum, I should say. I probably should slow this thing down, but holy crap, that's what you get for looking backwards while driving. Now I refer you back to page 255, paragraph C of the truck manual, which is switch on your damn engines before you crash into the ground. While we're up here, what we may as well do is actually head to a new biome. We have plenty of fuel in the truck, so if you get sick of driving, you can, uh, of course, take the easy way, which is rocketing your way off to another biome. The great thing you'll notice here is we can use those nerve rocket motors which are of course much more efficient to get as much horizontal speed as we can and we can just keep on switching on those uh, those four rocket engines underneath there just to keep on lifting us up as we lose some of our uh, some of our altitude. Now you may have noticed that we have four Werner engines up there on the Mark III crew cabin. We also have another four on the tail end of our space truck there near the drills. 
This just allows our craft to balance itself out as we're using our four thrusters from underneath our vessel. It just means that we have a little extra torque to keep things nice and level while we're firing those engines. We have of course now turned retrograde and we're now wiping off as much of our velocity as we can using those nerve rocket motors. The thruster weight with those two nerve rocket motors is pretty poor so quite often we need to use our other rockets just to wipe off some of that final velocity. Now up on top of our vessel we've actually got a little probe core and we can actually right click this when we need to and choose control from here and that means that our nav ball is centered in the right way just for when we're descending uh, when we're nice and flat like this just with those four engines underneath touching down there slightly moving backwards. So yes, apologies there landing that in the dark. We'll, uh, we'll time warp until the sun comes back up overhead. And of course we have our full set of mining equipment here. We also have our five star engineer Bill. And with all of this stuff running along together, we can actually refuel this thing very, very, very quickly actually before the sun even makes one pass over the moon. Now we have visited the east far side crater before, but there is a bunch of science readings that we haven't actually obtained before, so we can grab all these. Again, we can right click that storage container and collect all of the science from this vessel. And now we've basically got probably enough science to warrant really sending this whole thing back. So we're going to send this single little storage unit vessel all the way back to Kerbin. Now considering this little vessel only has one Oscar B fuel tank, it's got quite a lot of, uh, of Delta V. It doesn't have a great deal of mass to it though, it's got a very small parachute, battery, probe core, inline reaction wheel and of course a tiny little heat shield and uh, just one little solar panel. So this is enough to get us out of trouble until we get all the way back to Kerbin. The parachute itself is also set to auto-deploy whenever you stage this thing, so it basically means if you lose communication with it at some point, it will actually uh, deploy its own parachute, so that's great. Just re-entering the atmosphere here now, this little vessel has absolutely no trouble at all with overheating. You can basically just come rocketing down into the atmosphere. Uh, you don't even have to worry too much about having, you know, even a remotely high altitude. The single parachute that we have attached to this thing, of course, is massively overpowered for such a vessel with a tiny little weight to it. So after the parachutes come out here, it does take what seems like an eternity to actually come and touch down into the ocean here. With the magic of video editing though, we can speed that right up, collect our vessel, and here you can see we have uh, collected here over 650 science. Along with returning that science, we have also completed our build new surface outpost on the moon contract. So that's great, we can tick this one off as well and return back to our space truck. We'll take off again with this vehicle and uh, yeah, we can do some more biome hopping or whatever it is that we would like to do. And of course afterwards, finally come in and return back to where we left off. Bill Kerman will of course be very happy to see all of his workmates again. We have our science lab here. We have our small little hopper vessel there with Valentina Kerman in it. And yeah, this this landing isn't going quite as smoothly as the other few. Um, yeah, need to uh, wipe off some of this horizontal velocity before I come in. And touchdown there, yes. <laughs> Of course, once you have finished with your little modules out there, you can bring them back and slowly dock them back onto the truck, uh, if you're able to, that is. Thank you for making it all the way to the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed this little scene. Please do take a second and give this video a thumbs up. All your support helps a huge, huge amount. If you have any questions, pop them down in the comments. Uh, for those of you that haven't subscribed, uh, please do subscribe to see more. Follow me on Twitter at Marcus House Game, and we'll see you in the next video. So that looks a little better. Um, falling into the mohole now at least, but I'm probably going to clip the side of it, so I'd better thrust this way. And ta touchdown? I don't actually know if that qualifies as a touchdown. I'm kind of stuck. I'm just kind of wedged in.